Hello, I'm Dr. Nancy Garwood. Um, I've been in plant biology since 2005. Uh, I'm currently one of two curators of the herbarium, the other being Dr. Kurt Newbig. Uh, my background is in tropical biology in the broad sense, primarily uh, in um, uh, evolutionary and ecological uh, studies of plants. I'm currently working in Ecuador, but I've also worked in Belize, a lot in Panama, and a little bit in the Old World. Uh, I became interested in herbaria because I do a lot of community studies and I have to identify hundreds and hundreds of specimens of plants. So I've uh, used herbaria quite a bit and starting in 2009, I had the opportunity to uh, become uh, involved in running the herbarium here at SIU. And what I would like to do today is just give you a, a brief introduction to the herbarium, a little bit about its history and a little bit about the collections we hold and why they're important. Uh, the herbarium was established in 1878, and that was just a few years after uh, SIU was founded as the uh, state, one of the two state um, teaching colleges. The herbarium at that point was part of the General uh, University Natural History Museum. Its first major director was George uh, Hazen French who was an entomologist by training, but we, he did many, many plant collections and we hold them here. And they're some of the earliest plant collections uh, in our herbarium dating from the late 1800s. Uh, he's remained at the uh, university for many decades and there were other people who came to run the herbarium after him. I'm not going to give you a list of them all, but I would say that in the like 60s and the, uh, through the 80s, Dr. Uh, Robert Mollenbrock was involved with the herbarium as curator or director for a long period of time. And that is generally the period when the collections uh, built up to their sort of current levels. Today, we have roughly 100,000 uh, specimens. There are, uh, of, uh, these are primarily of uh, vascular plants. Uh, most of our collections are from, uh, from Illinois. I'd say about 50% oh, of our collections are from Illinois with a very heavy preponderance of specimens from uh, Southern Illinois. And that's really, really our strength is that we're uh, our very strong holdings in the, uh, the local uh, collection. We also have specimens from the rest of the United States and also from throughout the world. And it's these collections which are used in, in teaching, particularly teaching plant systematics, so we have a broad representation of plant families. Okay, here we have an example of the geographic distribution of our specimens. Most of our specimens are from Illinois, and this is an example from, from Clematis, with the green label means Illinois. Our green folders are not only most ubiquitous, they're also fatter, meaning there are more specimens from Illinois. And not shown by the colors is that the largest proportion of our species are from the southern counties in Illinois. But we also have specimens from the rest of North America and from throughout the world. Here are examples of clematis from Latin America, that would be um, uh, Central and South America, from the Old World, and also from Australia and Oceania. Uh, so these are just examples. We need these other specimens because it gives us a much better representation. There are many groups of plants that don't occur in Illinois or in North America or the New World. And so it's very good for teaching purposes to have examples of these families and genera from throughout the world. What we're trying to do is to make the information in the uh, herbarium more accessible to more people. We're doing this first by beginning to uh, database the information that we find on the herbarium labels. This includes the species name, uh, the location, when it, uh, the collector, and the time of year it was collected. And this, will, this is a permanent uh, record of where this uh, specimen was collected. And we want to 
database this, so this information will be available to other people. It can be used, for example, to look at species distributions, to look at current distributions, and then project into the future what the distribution of each plant species might be uh, with climate change. Okay, with our large collections, uh, the SIU Herbarium is a very important resource for uh, students at SIU, faculty, and the community at large. Uh, one thing we're trying to do is to make the data more easily accessible uh, to the public and to other scientists. Uh, one of our earlier efforts, which was started before I came on board in 2009, was to begin databasing the label information on the specimens. That's the name of the, uh, the species, the location. It was collected in uh, what time of year, and uh, it was collected and by whom. Uh, and now we're trying to go a little bit beyond that by uh, also uh, starting to digitize the specimens. That is, taking digital images of the specimens and releasing those to the public. Now this effort is just starting. Uh, when um, Dr. Newbig arrived in 2015, we had the chance to collaborate on several NSF grants. Uh, first of these was to train students in uh, museum and herbarium techniques. And the second grant is to actually digitize the specimens and to make them available. This work is just getting started. It's starting a little bit slower because of the COVID uh, pandemic, but we are now getting uh, really going on that. And we hope within a year or two to begin to be able to release uh, images of the specimens for use by a much wider audience. This is our digitization apparatus where we have a copy stand, a camera and lights we put the herbarium specimen in the center of this and then uh, click in high resolution image. And we're going to do this for each of the 100,000 specimens here in the herbarium. One important function of a herbarium is to allow students, faculty, and other people to identify the plants they, they, that they have collected. And for Illinois, we have a, a reference collection that that tries to have one example of each species. And if the species flowers and fruits at different times of the year, we try to have an example of it in the flowering and in the fruiting condition. And we also sometimes have examples of sterile material, which is often what ecologists collect. And so this is an example of our Illinois reference collection. And we have two, at least we have two cabinets with that material. And I'll just show you one example. If you collected a elm, you know it's an elm because you've studied the plants that much. You can open up the uh, Illinois uh, elm folder, the genus Ulmus, and you can see we have an example of the plants in uh, this is sterile condition, flowering condition. And for this species, not so much in fruit, but we do have flowering and fruiting material, sterile material of some of the other species. There are some young fruits of American elm. This is a sterile specimen probably of young shoots. And the juvenile foliage often looks very different from the adult foliage. And here are some really nice uh, fruits of um, almost pumala. So students could come in with their material that's been dried, frozen, and properly prepared, and look through the reference collection to identify their, their own collections. And then if they have problems with things they can't identify, they can seek help. But a lot of students are, uh, can identify most of their own material just using this reference collection. If you're working outside of Illinois, you might need to uh, access the larger herbarium. Uh, one of the advantages for students in working with the SIU herbarium is that we're an internationally recognized herbarium. That means that we can receive loans from other institutions. That is, they package up specimens of groups of organisms or plants that we're working on and ship them to us. This is one example of a loan we have for a project on a tropical tree called Trema. 
And we're using these various specimens, and we have hundreds on loan from different institutions. But we're using this uh, specimens to collect morphological information. Uh, we're measuring how large the leaves are. We're taking small samples and extracting DNA so that we can look at the phylogenetic relationships. Now, the SIU herbarium has maybe five, at most 10 specimens of trema. But in order to do a phylogenetic study, we need to look at hundreds of specimens in order to understand what are the species distributions, uh, what are the delimitations of species. And for that, we need to look at like hundreds of specimens. And it is much more convenient for people to send us the specimens than for us to visit uh, the many different herbaria that hold these specimens. This is, you know, one set, uh, uh, one cabinet that has, you know, some of our loans. We have uh, another uh, cabinet with more loans. And this gives us uh, uh, ample sample in order to look at and study the uh, genus in particular. Now, th this could be done by students. Uh, this process can be used by students in different, studying different groups of plants, uh, be they bryophytes or uh, other, other va uh, vascular plants.